Hello and welcome to Heading North. I'm your host, Nick, and I'm very happy you're here. But before we get started, I would like to invite you to go to the new video page on the Heading North website. So if you go to headingnorthpodcast.com forward slash video, I've been playing around with the idea of adding videos for all the great adventures I have found myself on and uh, will hopefully be adding videos of recordings of some of your favorite episodes in the near future. But I will also be uh, doing some video episodes coming in the future that will be directly on there. So definitely check that out. Again, you can find that at headingnorthpodcast.com forward slash videos. Moving into the uh, episode subject, as it were, we're going to be talking today about being the modern wayfinder. In a technology-driven world, we have become very accustomed to using our phones and apps like Google and Apple Maps, as well as hiking apps like All Trails or Gaia GPS to find our way to a destination. These are all very useful and easy ways to navigate, but what happens when our phone batteries die or there is no signal for these apps to adequately navigate our path? I know a lot of people are going to argue the handheld GPS doesn't require signal as much so as the transmissions being sent from the GPS satellites. Still, the battery can die. And there's something that I always bring up and talk about because being prepared, you want to make sure you have everything you need, even when things go wrong. Uh, So this week, I would like to look at how to navigate using a compass and map as well as a basic understanding of using modern GPS devices and phones to navigate yourself. Uh, So before we dive into maps and compasses, let's look at the options we have to navigate electronically. Handheld GPS devices are extremely useful and popular devices for navigation. A GPS or global positioning system is a satellite-based system that works 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, and consists of a minimum of 24 satellites, most have 31 to 33 satellites, that circle the Earth two times a day each. Now, each satellite emits a unique signal. A handheld GPS device like a Garmin GPS Map 66 receives those signals and measures its distance from each satellite by the amount of time it takes to receive a transmitted signal. Now, most well-built handheld GPS devices are accurate within 3 to 5 meters. Keep in mind that certain atmospheric factors and other error sources can affect the accuracy of your GPS receiver. Handheld GPS receivers offer features such as the ability to create a route, as well as the ability to download preset maps. Now, it's not going to be as simple as the phone apps that we use like Gaia GPS or All Trails. You actually physically have to go online, download those, and then upload them to your handheld GPS device. And handheld GPS devices are powered by different types of batteries that can last up to 10 hours of use. The lifetime on how long those batteries will last if they are rechargeable varies, but generally 10 hours is what you're going to get out of a GPS device. In a world filled with smartphones, there are many navigation apps available as well. These apps offer a large collection of preset hikes throughout the world. Uh, this is something I normally use. I personally use All Trails. Um, so, the, but the two most popular apps for trail navigation are All Trails as well as Gaia GPS. Like I just said, I use All Trails pretty religiously. I've been looking a lot into Gaia GPS just based off of research that I've done for some podcasts in the past, as well as being on the trail and meeting people who have used it. Uh, these apps are very user friendly and offer a multitude of features. And like the aforementioned preset trail maps, as well as the ability to find hikes in your area and notify others of your planned path, these apps are extremely useful and are usually community driven with what trails you're able to find on the apps themselves. These apps are at the will of your phone's battery life, so keep that in mind based off of how much time you'll actually be able to use these devices You may possibly want to bring a battery bank or plan on another type of navigation option. So now our batteries are dead and you need to find your way. What do you do? Here's where knowing how to use a map and compass come into play. A very important item to have in this instance is a compass. A compass is a small device that points at true north. It accomplishes this by detecting the Earth's natural magnetic fields. The Earth has an iron core that is part liquid and part solid crystal. And it is believed that the movement in the liquid outer core is what produces Earth's magnetic fields. Now, the Earth's magnetic field has two poles, north and south. A compass uses a floating magnetic needle to find magnetic north. The red end of that needle indicates north and the white or silver end is south. Now, true north, opposed to magnetic north, is the direction that points directly towards the geographical north pole. Maps are generally oriented using true north, and you'll find it easiest to point the N on your compass towards the true north when you box your needle. 
Boxing your needle means to have the red arrow within the red arrow outline or orienting line on the compass. There are two ways to take a bearing on the trail, by sight and by map. Navigate by sight is much simpler. If you are heading to a mountain or lake, point at it from the current position with the travel arrow on the compass. Rotate the outer ring of the compass or the azimuth ring until the orienting arrow is lined up with the red end of the magnetic needle pointing towards north. And at this point, as long as you have your traveling arrow pointed in the direction you need to go, you'll realize that this has happened because the red arrow and or the orienting arrow will be pointing at the landmark in true north. And you just, that way you can just navigate based off of sight. When traveling by map, you want to place your map and compass on the ground. One thing to keep in mind is, is that a compass can be affected heavily by magnetic sources. So you want to make sure you're not on a stone with a lot of iron rich minerals or other minerals or on something like a park table or anything like that that does have metal in it. So once you have your map and your compass on the ground, you want to mark your current position as well as your intended destination destination and draw a straight line between them. Now line up the edge of your compass on this line so that the travel arrow is the direction you wish to travel. Then twist the azimuth ring until north on the map and the orienting arrow is aligned. At this point you can pick up your compass and turn until the orienting arrow and the red magnet magnetic arrow are lined up and that's the direction you need to travel. Compasses by practice are quite easy to use but when you are first starting out, they can be a little bit tricky. So what I would recommend is to take this information and to go out to a local park or somewhere that you know your way around and test these, these options out and see what works best for you in navigating. It's going to seem a lot more daunting than it really is. So I, I can't beseech upon you enough to uh, make sure that you are practicing and trying and using these options because they're extremely great to have and they don't take a battery. You can put a compass in your pack and a small piece of paper map in your pack and you're good to go. Now we need to look at places where you can find adequate hiking trail maps. It is important to look for maps that are up to date, being that if you're using or working with an older map, let's say even a year or two years old, there may be differences or updates to the trail that were not recorded when the map was made. Some of these changes, depending on terrain and reason for the change, can dramatically affect your navigation of that trail. And really, it could be that there was a washout on the trail or they're diverting based off of reforesting or a multitude of other options that could cause these maps to, to change. But you always want to look and make sure you see the date on the map and you know that it is a current map, not something that could be different from what you're looking at. In areas that rely on hiking and outdoor tourism, you can find maps at most local stores in town or county information areas. For those of you who like to plan ahead like myself, this just won't work. This being the case, there are multiple places to download maps ahead of time to print them out. Both All Trails and Gaia GPS can be accessed via the web. Uh, these two sites have a vast amount of hiking trails and you can download and print PDF versions of the maps that they provide on their apps. I should add that this feature on all trails does require a pro membership in order to be able to use it. It costs $29.99 a year uh, to gain access to the pro features. If you currently use all trails and do not have a pro subscription, I highly recommend it. Not only can you download maps, but it offers features like access to the smartphone watch app, off trail notifications, and lifelink that keeps your loved ones up to date on your location while you're on your trek. Gaia GPS is very similar as a GPS device system, but can be accessed via phone app as well as on the computer or tablet. Gaia does require a little bit more work than an app like AllTrails, but it not only provides a list of logged hikes, but also provides a clear way to plan new routes or a combination of routes to easily navigate your planned hike. There are also websites that have an expansive library of hiking trails throughout the U.S. and the world. Hikingproject.com is one of those websites. It is a very similar to the app-based site and has a decent list of hiking trails throughout the United States. And the National Park Service also provides a detailed library of maps for all its parks and trails. Those can be found at nps.gov. And I'll put both of those in the show notes for you guys. That way you have them easy to click. You can absolutely use any of these options while on the trail. Just make sure that you have also printed the map. When choosing a map, it is important to know what type of map to use. There are three majorly known types of maps available. The topographical map, a road map, and a tourist map. For the instance of hiking, the topographical map is your best bet. So the topographical map uses graded lines and numbers to allow its reader to tell elevation gains and natural landmarks. Before using your map, it is important to understand the features of the map you are using. Every map has a legend. The legend gives a description of the different features and markings on the map. There will also be the title. The title of the map tells you what the map is of, and usually you can find the date there. 
Topographical maps also have a grid reference. Maps are broken up into grid boxes. So this is going to be very much longitude, latitude, X and Y axis boxes that allow you to navigate. Another important item on a map is the north arrow. This, this arrow tells you which direction on the map is north. And lastly, there will be a scale. The scale tells you what scale your map is physically is to give you an idea of distance. Usually you'll see it where it gives you a mark of what a mile is and then that way you can plan just for how far you can make it in a day. Now in conclusion to all this, you can absolutely use any of the options electronic options I should say while on the trail. You just want to make sure that you also have printed the map for the trail you are going on in case you do not have a cell phone signal or your electronic devices die. It is imperative, especially if you're doing longer hikes. And I understand if you're comfortable on a one, two mile trail that you've been on a bunch of times, you may not necessarily need that. But really what you need to look at is what happens if you fall and slide down a hill or an area that you can't get back up to the trail. What happens if a predator chases you and you have to break off trail in order to keep yourself safe? Well, these are all instances that can severely get you lost. You can even get lost by not paying attention to the map or your navigation system and taking the wrong turn and it being way too long before you realize that you had made that decision. So not having a backup plan to an electronic device to me is very silly. It's something easy to do, quick print out online. If you're already using one of the apps, you can print them out. If you're using a Garmin GPS, you can print these maps out right off of your computer or off your smartphone if you're connected via Wi-Fi to a printer. So why not have these options? You can also get a compass on REI, um, Dick Sporting Goods. You can even pick one up at Walmart. So please take a time, the time to listen to this and listen to the information. Uh, there's a lot more that can go into navigating via map and GPS, but I wanted to give a rudimentary explanation on how to do so. I know it's a little bit tough when you're listening, so I do apologize for that. And that all being said, thank you so much for listening into this week's episode. Music in this episode is by Asylum Music and Media Works. And if you liked anything you heard today, go to www.headingnorthpodcast.com. You can find Heading North on Facebook and Instagram by searching Heading North Podcast or Heading North Pod on Twitter. To support the show, click the link in the show notes or check out the Heading North merch shop by going to headingnorthpodcast.com forward slash shop or become a patron by going to patreon.com forward slash headingnorthpodcast. As always, please leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere you listen to podcasts.